things of that nature, 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 things of that nature. All right, Razorback fans, we know Arkansas, Texas A&M facing off against each other tomorrow and what will be the last time in the Southwest Classic having this game in Arlington. So let's talk a little bit about the Texas A&M Aggies as we are joined now by a very special guest, David Nuno of TexAgs and TexAgs.com. And David, appreciate you joining me, man. How you doing? Thank you, buddy. I, I'm looking forward to this matchup. I actually enjoy going to uh, Arlington for this game every year. Uh, I do think it needs to be on campus, but I, I kind of enjoy going to the the Dallas experience. Uh, but I haven't been to Fayetteville, so I'm looking forward to that next year. Yeah, I've never been to College Station, so I'm, I'm looking forward to whenever that ends up happening too. Uh, here, hopefully, in the next couple of years. But uh, you know, we've talked about from our perspective how Arkansas fans feel about going into this game, and you know, it's always been a crazy one. But just from the A and M perspective, how, how do fans feel right now? Just about a I guess a third of the way through the regular season and the confidence level heading into this game. What's the vibe like in College Station? I think the vibe is TBD, right? Like they cautiously optimistic, but the Bowling Green game, unfortunately, I think kind of worries people. Like, are we going to see that kind of performance against SEC teams? And, and there's two ways to look at it, John. Like there's Bowling Green's a really good team. Um, I'm not saying they're winning the SEC good, but they're a good team that has scared other opponents. They scared Penn State this year. They scared Michigan last year for a half. They beat Georgia Tech last year. So they're, they're a quality opponent, but a game that a and made some mistakes to make it a little tighter than it needed to be. The Florida manuscript, like what they did on the road in Gainesville, if they're able to dictate the line of scrimmage, right? If their offensive line can get the kind of uh, – a space that they got against the Gators and their defense is able to cook, then then it starts feeling more like that season. But I think it's still TBD because you didn't even know your quarterback situation because Connor Wigman is a very good quarterback but had his struggles against Notre Dame. We haven't seen him play since McNeese. You've got Marcel Reed who is very much like Taylor Green where he can, he can certainly run the ball. Sometimes he can throw the ball accurately. Uh, he hasn't had any turnovers, but you're, you're trying to see a young quarterback kind of feel his way through the season. So I think cautiously optimistic, but always worried because the last three years have given you plenty to be worried about. Well, you mentioned the quarterback situation and uh, Wegman's been dealing with an injury. How, how do you see this playing out? I mean, is, is you going to have Marcel get the start? Is it going to be Wegman? Could it be maybe both? Just what's the quarterback situation? How do you see it playing out? I think it's Marcel Reed going this week. And then depending on how he plays, what Missouri looks like the week after, but I think it's Marcel because I'm not sure how much Connor has practiced this weekend. And, you know, with a separated shoulder or AC joint issue, like that can linger, man. That can certainly linger. And if you haven't had a bunch of practices, do you go into an SEC game when your team has been 2-0 and with Marcel Reed, right? So um, you don't have to rush him back. And in this game, look, both there's a lot of strength on strengths in this game. And one of those is mobile quarterbacks. Both teams have it. The other one is really good running games. Both teams have it beyond the quarterbacks, right? So um, I, I could see Marcel Reed. And, and I, maybe for this team in particular, Marcel Reed at this point in the season might be the better fit for right now because I haven't seen any big playmakers on the a and offensive side, right? Noah Thomas has not emerged as this huge threat yet. It can still happen. Jerry Barber hasn't. Cyrus Allen had one big game against Florida. So and, until you are able to get some separation from wide receivers and get the, the ball into space for those guys, I think Marcel Reed's athleticism gives him a different dimension. So, David, what would you say just for the perspective of, like, I'm looking at the numbers, for, like, for instance, and all the ranks of where Texas A&M ranks in, in the SEC and in the country when it comes to offense, defense, all that stuff. But just forgetting that from your perspective, what is the biggest weakness for this A&M team? If Arkansas is going to win this game, what weakness do they need to exploit? Two, two areas, all right? Offensively, um, I, I think a and you're going to have to prove that A&M can throw the ball down the field, right? Both teams can run the ball, but if you stack the box a little bit and you force Marcel Reed and Taylor Green to throw, that to me is going to be the difference in this game. Now, I'm much more confident in Andrew Armstrong than I am in the wide receiver core that A&M has. Andrew Armstrong, though, he needs to have some help, right? It can't just be him. And, um, you know, we talked the other day, Luke Haas hasn't been getting the ball a bunch. He scares me. He scares me in this game because he has been kind of quiet. So if, if I'm Arkansas, I'm, I'm doing what Bowling Green did is I'm going to make, make Marcel Reed beat you with his arm, right? And he's been 
he's been pretty good. He hasn't been great, but he hasn't he doesn't have any turnovers. He's been really good. So that's one area. The other area is AM's defense has been really good, not spectacular because they give up big plays. All their scoring really this year. Notre Dame had a couple big plays on them. McNeese with the backups had some big plays on them. Uh, Florida had a couple big plays on them, and you saw Bowling Green, you know, first play in the second half, you know, what was a 70 yard, 60 yard touchdown, whatever it was. So the big plays have hurt AM's defense and, and skewed the numbers a little bit. And AM's inability to get big plays on offense has hurt them. So, David, now looking at it with Arkansas, for instance, that I, I did the numbers in this Southwest Classic or however you want to put it. When Arkansas won this game, which hasn't been very often, but when they've won this game, Arkansas went on to win eight or more games that season. When they've lost this game, they've only ended up winning seven or less. So Arkansas fans feel that this game is pretty much everything in the season. For AM, do they feel kind of the same way given their schedule, given how things are going? Is this kind of that pivotal game to, hey, beat a team that maybe you feel like you're supposed to, and that can open up to having a successful season, or at least a better season than what was anticipated? So Billy Lucci, our executive editor and co-owner, he kind of fact-checked me, not fact-checked, he corrected me on the show today. I think this game, to me, pushed you down a certain path, okay? Now, if you lose to Arkansas, who's a really good team, that doesn't mean you're going to go 7-5, and five, right? You, you got two losses early, but that doesn't mean you go 7-5. and five. To me, though, like I feel like this is the game that sets you up for, for potential greatness. I'm not saying AM's going to have a great season. What it does do is keep you in the conversation a little bit longer. Because if you beat Arkansas, now you're four and one. And most people think AM had or should have won the Notre Dame, at least here. We that game was a, a tie game with two minutes left, and they ended up losing by 10. So if you beat Arkansas, you're four and one, sets up a top 10 showdown with Missouri. I think Missouri is vulnerable. And if AM is clicking, now you're talking about a potentially. And again, there's a lot. Of, I'm not predicting this to happen. What I'm saying is this game, Arkansas, can put you down that path. Because if you have a top 10 showdown with Missouri after being 4-1 and one, and you win that game, potentially in this world, you go into a bye week, then you get Mississippi State. So I guess my point is this Arkansas team game can set, set you up for that still being a talking point. Or now you're 3-2 and two, and you struggle with Arkansas and who emerges from that next group of teams that's going to be really good. And now you're thinking about a top you know 10 Missouri team coming to town and that becomes a must win. So like, I'm not saying that this game means everything. What I'm saying is certain storylines can be strengthened either way. Well, David, last one before I let you get out of here, man. Uh, we had a great discussion on my show earlier this week about this, the Southwest Classic in general being in Arlington. I think both fan bases are 100% saying, hey, it's time. We, we need to get out. Like, Let's just go back to having home and home. But from looking at, at the past and, and the, I guess the whole reason that it even got set up in the first place, do you feel like A&M – benefited impact like anything from having the Southwest classic there in Arlington. Was there any sort of consequence or bonus or benefit to having that game over the past 14 or so years? Yeah. I mean, how many did they win? So, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You, you know, you know, like if, if we're, if we're talking about did they benefit? Yeah. They dominated the series. Right. Um, I don't know if they dominate that series if it's home and home. Right. I, I would hope that they could have, but I, I don't know. Uh, and I'm not saying because it was in Dallas, a and M dominated, but the point is, they were really good. They lost one time, right? Um, and it was in 2021, a game that Arkansas won 20 to 10, a game that Arkansas was up big 17 to 3, if I remember correctly, at the half. That's something to that effect. The, uh, I think it was Zach Calzada's second start of his of his run, and he was horrendous in the first half. The, the team was, not just Zach. And then, in fact, I talked about this on my show later on uh, earlier today, a and had a chance to actually tie that game. They were down 17 to 10. They're driving in the fourth quarter. Calzada throws the ball off the center's head. Bryce Foster's intercepted. And then Arkansas goes on to score a field goal to win 20 to 10. So, yeah, I think from an AM perspective, like, like it's been great. I just like college football being played in uh, college towns. I love it. In home stadiums. I, I love. There's something about going to Ole Miss. There's something about going to South Carolina. It's just the charm of it. The, the, going to a Costco, if you will. That's what it feels like when you go to these NFL stadiums, right? It's like going to a Costco. Like Everything is so nicely put in a certain way. I like the niceness in the college football kind of setting. I don't want it to be an air-conditioned mall. I want it to be outdoors. I want it to be college football at its best. Yeah, I think Arkansas fans feel like it doesn't doesn't benefit at all because of the fact that they lost. And, here, and here's the thing. I know I said this is the last one, but 
the way that Arkansas has lost some of these games, or in hindsight, the way that A and M has won some of these games, has mm-hmm. been pretty insane. Like there's been so many times I felt like Arkansas had a big lead and something happened. You know, Dan Skipper gets a tripping call, or uh, you know, Brett Bielma decided to unspeakably kick to Christian Kirk for some reason. You know, just stuff like that has always been. So funny how uh, these games have gone, and so I think Razor Rack fans are just more tired of it because they're like they're they're confident, but they're also like there's going to be some way that they lose this game in some crazy way. It's going to happen. Well, I, here's the thing: these games, like I can make an argument right now why I think A and M will win comfortably. Right? I can make that argument, and I know that your listeners don't hear that. I can make that argument. I can make an argument that Arkansas wins comfortably too. There's and, and the reason I bring that up to you is I feel like if we're talking about talent for talent, I think AM has more talent on the roster. If we're talking about coaching, I still think there's a TBD on, on Mike Elko, but I think he's going to be elite. I believe that to be the case. That about Jimbo, I, I was obviously wrong. Sam Pittman, though, not only is he such a likable personality, that's not a football thing. He just, I think his players love to play for him. And with the magic of Bobby Petrino in that offense, Bobby knows how to cook up things that, like, especially, like he knows this roster differently than he knows, like, because it is the roster is half different, right? Like, he didn't have all these guys, but he did have Connor Wegman for a little while. He did have Noah Thomas. He did have some of this offensive line. Um, he understands some of the things, and he can share that information with the defensive coordinator. But also, he can cook up things on the offensive side of the ball to really make this game uh, super interesting. And, and by the way, I want to see, because Arkansas has done such a good job at stopping the run and such a good job at running the ball. What does AM do really well? They're good at stopping the run and running the ball. So who's going to be the best at it in this particular game? And it might boil down to which quarterback makes the least amount of mistakes. Yeah, I think that's the key to the game as well. But no matter what, it should be a great one. should be interesting, and uh, I'm sure whichever ends up happening is going to be a wild one no matter what. But either way, David Nuno of TechSags and TechSags.com. Appreciate you joining us, man. Enjoy the game, the final game in Arlington between these two teams, and uh, I guess we'll see how it plays out. But I know we'll be catching up with you later down the road. I appreciate you, John. See you soon, brother.